Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> What are you saying people, back with a bang. Here I am to bring you guys my top stocks to watch for this August. So in this video I got about, I'd say six or seven, maybe a couple more stocks for bonus to watch for this upcoming month. Reason being because you can get shares in, you can get options, some of them are oversold. And just to mix it up a bit and diversify, I've got stocks from retail, I've got stocks in consumer, e-commerce, fintech, machinery. We've got a few different stocks today that you guys can look into. And of course, you know, this is not financial advice, but a lot of these stocks have a lot of great opportunity right now. So without further ado, make sure to drop a thumbs up, show some support, show some appreciation. These videos do take a long time to look at the charts, to review the charts, to look at the balance sheets, the income statements, to do all that kind of stuff. And of course, edit and upload as well. So make sure you drop a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you comment, subscribe, and also share if you're new around here. Don't forget, this week, we're going to be trading live in the Discord, so make sure you come drop in and tap into the Royal Trading Academy. But like I said, let's get straight into it. So the first stock today is going to be PayPal. Yes, your favorite payment processor. So PayPal, take symbol PYPL. I'm just going to pull up Yahoo Finance to look at PayPal. So let's look at what their PE ratio is. They have a PE ratio of 15. I like that. PayPal just reported earnings a couple weeks ago, and that's where the big gap, gap up came from. So remove the key events. If we look at the past five years, PayPal was up at three, 305, maybe a little bit higher, just three years ago. We are at, we are at, we're pretty much at the lows. The lowest was around $50 last year. We're pretty much at a low. And the reason I like pay, PayPal is because they have a relatively new CEO, Alex Chris, who's been in the business about, I think, eight or nine months. And what he's done so far is pretty incredible. Now, he has big plans for the company in terms of revenue, in terms of growth, in terms of innovation. And... Like I said, you know, this stock is way oversold. So the risk to reward ratio is really there. The PE ratio is nice and low, usually like around the 15 to 20 PE ratio. So it's clearly there. I'd also say that recently with PayPal last, again, eight to nine months, the new CEOs helped increase user growth. You might realize that PayPal actually owned PayPal, but also Venmo. Um, you've heard people say, can I Venmo you? Can I PayPal you? People are starting to use that as a verb as well. You, you know PayPal's getting bigger when people are starting to say, can I PayPal you? So last week they reported earnings, as I mentioned. I'm going to jump over the trading views for this one, actually. Looking at the daily chart. So it obviously gapped up from around $57 to highs of $65. And the good thing is that, like I said, they're increasing user growth. They're increasing, increasing operating income, revenue, net income. Margins are coming back to where they should be. It's looking a lot brighter for this company. And again, the risk to reward ratio is amazing. Now from the technical side of things, it looks like there's a double bottom or even a triple bottom along this long, very sturdy line of support. So there's a lot more upside in, in comparison to downside. Yes, yesterday it was down 5%, but look at this August. We're expecting it to move towards $68, then $91. And then my eventual price target for the next year is 118, all the way up here. I do believe PayPal can get there. It might take longer, but for those of you who are investors, it doesn't really matter. If you get your shares at 55, 60 bucks and you're trying to get it to 90, 100, well, that might take two years. It might take five years. But again, the new CEO has come in. He's starting to innovate. He's starting to make changes. He's starting to see positive returns on his actions. That's what we want to see from any stock. So that's what PayPal's on the list for. PayPal is one I bang on about on my YouTube channel. If you're new around here, you might not know, but it is one I talk about in a lot of videos. So when I say we're near all time lows and in my opinion, this is at a huge discount rather than being overpriced and dead in the water. I definitely look at PayPal. It's one I use pretty regularly. It's one a lot of people are starting to use more and more. And again, this is one which is at a good discount in my opinion. Next up, we're going to go to Shopify, ticker symbol S-H-O-P. So you guys may know Shopify, you may not know Shopify. Shopify does website building. So Shopify is one of those companies which a lot of people would use to build a website. I've done that for my smartwatches, Time Gear watches. But Shopify is now at $54. If you look at the last five years, during the pandemic, it was up at $167, $170. Okay, yeah, no PE ratio right now, as of now. Well, this is a stock which is, I'd say, at least $100 stock in the next year. If you go, again, trading view, we look at Shopify and we zoom all the way out. Look at the lows it hit after the pandemic. You know, we, we hit the famous highs during the pandemic. We sold off heavily. We were at $28. And then we managed to start rallying back up, up to $90. Now we sold off. Once you can find some level of support, find a, 
reasonable price point where it seems like it's you know getting to that buy zone i will be looking to buy shopify anywhere here 45 46 dollars i will be looking to purchase shopify one thing to note is earnings is this upcoming wednesday before market so that could have an effect on a stock in a negative or positive way but as i'm sure you're aware if you are investing in any stocks earnings is always going to report it one way or another so make sure just keep your eyes on that and make sure to take note next up another stock reporting earnings this week airbnb let's go and check their PE ratio as well they report earnings after hours tuesday so that may again affect the stock negatively or positively so by the time you decide to buy the stock if you do it could be up or down from where i made the video so 128 dollars a p ratio of 17 yeah like i said between that 15 and 20 points yeah that's all right p ratio of 17 is pretty good so airbnb in my opinion is pretty it's pretty fairly priced but i do think it has a lot more potential than it's currently showing so what would it take me for me to buy this stock airbnb if you look at the daily chart again i like it to fall a little bit lower 120 dollars and then eventually if it does get affected by earnings negatively enough we could see us roll back down to that 110 dollars price point so i'll keep my eyes on it this week airbnb is not going anywhere anytime soon in my eyes it's still dominating their industry they're still ahead of the hotels yes they have pretty ridiculous fees sometimes with the cleaning fees service fees sometimes the taxes that kind of stuff but they're still pretty cheaper than your regular hotel. They're pretty more convenient than those hotels as well. So Airbnb is definitely one to watch. Again, earnings is this coming, upcoming week. My buying price point is between $110 and $120. Let's see if earnings has an effect, a negative effect or a positive effect. Last couple of earnings, it's had mixed results. So again, it'll be intriguing to see how it fares this upcoming week. But it's definitely one to keep on watch for this August. Next up, we're going to AMAT, Applied Materials. So first thing we notice when we look at this daily chart, a beautiful chart from the last two years, just steadily uptrending. That's the kind of chart you want to see when you are investing in a stock. Now, the reason it's on the watch list, it has fallen pretty heavily over the past month and we're trying to find support. We're broken below the moving averages. We're looking pretty bearish down 7% yesterday. But once we can find support, maybe around $170, a little bit less, I will be looking to get into AMAT. Another earnings which is coming soon, so they're not this week, but the week after. I'll be keeping AMAT on my watch list. I'll be keeping my eyes on it. I'll be looking at it to see how it performs in the lead up to earnings, running up to earnings, but also obviously as earnings are announced. Let's check on Yahoo Finance what the P ratio is. 20, 20.87, not bad. Again, looking at all time chart of AMAT, it's up a lot higher than when it was first introduced to the market so again one to watch on your watch list next up on my watch list is sofi tick symbol s-o-f-i sofi is heavily beat up right now six dollars 65 dropped another seven percent yesterday but the thing with sofi is and this is what i want you guys to note you know what i'm going to pull up palantir just to show you palantir last year around may june was this low you'll see it right now it was down in the dumps it was lower than eight dollars last year may Look, lo and behold, it is now $25. And it's one that I'd mentioned a lot of times when it was around $10, $12. It made highs of $29 earlier this year. And I do think so far is one that could move the same way Palantir has done within the next 18 to 20 months. So my price targets are on screen. $11, $11.83. That's the next couple price targets for SoFi. Obviously, we need to break that $10 price point first and then move higher. So what's going to help SoFi push? What's going to help SoFi start to get some momentum? Well, right now they are a company which is not profitable. You will see that if we go to Yahoo Finance again. There would be no PE ratio. There we go, no PE ratio. But SoFi is a company who will start rising as interest rates fall because people will be trying to refinance. People will be trying to lend money. SoFi should be one that starts, well, hopefully starts moving up when we see, get that kind of news in regards to lowering rates. So if I should also be one that starts to move when people start to flock towards the fintech companies. Right now, fintech, the banks are getting destroyed. No one's really moving their money to that sector. In due time, again, I'm saying 18 to 20 months, I have a price target for $11 and then a little bit higher. I think this level here, $6.65, we're getting closer to my buy price, which is around $6.50, a little bit less because that's where the support is. So if I is one that intraday, it can fall heavy when it does fall. So if you're a long-term investor and you're already in, hold tight. That's what I will say. Of course, again, not financial advice. 
Next up, a company which is a lot further ahead in their timeline than SoFi, Amazon, ticker symbol AMZN. So Amazon, the amazing Amazon, tanked yesterday after earnings, which is why I'm looking at it. It dropped 9%. Now you might think this is a pretty boring pick. It isn't. Look at that chart. Does that chart look boring to you? For those of you who like long-term investing, this looks like a good buy, especially at these levels. We pull back to you know levels we were at earlier in February this year, so we've got a nice little discounted price for Amazon. Also, one thing to note is those companies like Meta, when they have Zuckerberg, Elon, at Tesla, Amazon with Bezos, you can't really count this company out. There might be a bad earnings here and there. There might be. The stock might drop 10%, 20% you know, within a few months, sure. But it seems to always recover. They're going to continue with their innovation, AI, robotics, all that kind of stuff. Expect Amazon to rise again and be back up at a $200 price point soon enough. So Amazon is why I'm looking to buy anywhere around this level here, 160 but again, that could be call options for 60 days out for you. Some, it could be leaps for you if you've got the money. And for those of you who just like your long-term shares, this is a good, is we're getting to that price point where I would say, yep, I'm looking to invest in Amazon. Next up, we are going to go with one of the best performing stocks over the past year, and that is NVIDIA, ticker symbol NVDA. So this is from the semiconductors. And NVIDIA is at $107. But if you look at the stock, over the last year, like I said, they did do a stock split recently, so you can't really see the price. But let's be honest, it, I'd say it tripled or quadrupled in such a short period of time. And it went from 200 to around, I think, 1200 in a few, like around six months. So from this price point here, let's say it was $41, $40 to where it got up to a couple months ago. Yeah, this made huge gains. Now it's pulling on back just as everything in tech is right now. But I still like this for a buy. You know, we're pulling it towards my buy zone. It's slightly oversold now, dropped from $137 to around $107. But if we can fall down to around $100, maybe a little bit lower, under $100 and get back up to those levels, that's a, like a 35, 40% return potential. So the, it's a low risk, high reward play, especially because of the company itself, how good they are, how strong they are. And eventually I want to get back up to that $154 price point. So Nvidia is definitely one to watch this August. Again, if it can pull on back like it did the last couple of days and drop to that $100 level as it briefly did, then we can see Nvidia being at an, what I would say is a nice opportunity to buy. Obviously not financial advice, but remember that, hey, it looked like it was a double top on the chart, which is a bearish sign. So just keep your eyes on it because it could continue falling with the rest of tech. Obviously you guys know they're very innovative in regards to what they did with AI this year, which is why it pumped so high, but it has pulled on back as I said recently. So just keep watching it just see how it performs before buying it if you do. Personally, I'd like to see a nice uptrend, confirmation of reversal from this bearish movement it's been doing. But I do think, once again, Nvidia is one that you shouldn't really ignore. You know, you've got AMD, SMCI, a couple others as well. Nvidia is one where I look at the potential to drop to $100. And I think, yeah, that's the price point I'd be comfortable buying a lot of shares in. Picking up Nvidia shares under $100 would definitely be something where I'm like, yeah, this is exactly what I wanted to see. So keep your eyes on NVIDIA. And for the, let's say the last couple stocks I'll give you as a bonus stock, because I think we've done around six or seven stocks right now. I'll give you two bonus ones. They're both huge companies. They're companies that are booming, maybe not in the market, but they are booming. They are Nike and Starbucks. So Nike, ticker symbol NKE. Let's check what the P ratio is currently. I'd say it's around probably, hopefully 15 to 20, but around 18 potentially. So Nike, okay, 19.84, slightly higher than expected, but it's still a good PE ratio. Starbucks, on the other hand, has a 21.25 PE ratio, okay. Starbucks, so they're both around the same price point, $74, $75. So Nike, starting off with Nike, well, last earnings, it dropped heavily, so that was in June. It was around $98, and it dropped all the way down to 73. Starbucks, on the other hand, reported earnings and it sold off back in May, and it hasn't recovered to those levels yet. So with Starbucks, we're really looking at getting back to those levels it was pre-earnings in April, um, pushing back and maybe gapping up to that, I'd say, 80, $85, $86 level. I do think Starbucks is slightly on the oversold side right now, especially in regards to what I see from Starbucks, what I see from um, their CEO right now. I think they've just had an earnings recently, which made it sell off a little bit more. But if you look at a lot of these stocks, you know, Nike, Starbucks, the big stocks. When you think of athletes, you think of Nike. When you think of coffee, you think of Starbucks. Starbucks has a lot to offer. The market price right now might not be affecting how it really is. But just going back to Nike, just look at that. Let's be honest. It is down to 
lows that we reached in 2021. So that's three years ago. So Nike is way oversold. My price targets are $133 and then $135 before we push higher. But you also have to remember, Nike is worldwide. Nike is global. Nike is one of those stocks when you think of LeBron James, Olympics, think of Serena Williams, Cristiano Ronaldo, different athletes that they have signed. You think Nike is going to be just falling like that and continue falling? I doubt it, not in the next few years at least. We still have potential. We still need to break above the moving averages and then we can maybe push on higher. Just to check out the four hour chart, it's a similar story. You want to see the price action break above the moving averages so we can eventually gap up back to that $90 price point and push on closer towards $100. Nike is also one that pays a dividend, I believe. I might need to check that, but I believe they pay a dividend as well. And um, yeah, market cap 111 billion. Nike is not going anywhere anytime soon. Let's be honest. It looks like it's pretty beat up right now, but Nike is not going anywhere anytime soon. For those of you who are planning to invest in Nike, again, I'm not doing any financial advice. I'm not advising you to invest in Nike, but for those of you who are looking at investing in Nike, the risk to reward ratio here is excellent. I think it is one of the best on this stock list. But of course, as it is already a well-known company, I'm not going to say it's the best choice in regards to the risk to reward ratio. Starbucks, on the other hand, is not as oversold as Nike is, but it's still room for a push up to $100, $103, maybe a little bit further as well. But Starbucks, just like Nike, is around the mid 70s. That's where it's been trading at. A little bit of consolidation as well as of late. But we have potential to run up to $116. That's a what 30, 45%, 30 to 45% return on your money. Um, the potential is nice. But you do remember that when we get to that $116 price point, it does seem to get rejected there and fall back down. But the levels we're at right now, on the other hand, it looks like we're at a nice level of support for Starbucks. So I am looking again at seeing if I can trade this to around $100 on further, just to see if we can get some great returns. I mean, we had a great run in 2021. 2022 similar story and only last year 2023 did we sell off a little bit due to the news about starbucks being support of the war and people boycotting it and then since we've sold off but if it does start to show signs of a reversal shine show signs confirmation of uptrend again then it is definitely what i'm looking at because again starbucks is one of those companies which is not going away when you think of ice coffee when you think of getting a drink they also do food all that kind of thing you think of starbucks these days just that morning breakfast just getting that quick food getting a quick iced coffee or a drink hot chocolate whatever it is you do think of starbucks before you think of dunkin donuts or pete's coffee or tim hortons or any of those you think of starbucks first let's be honest so i will be looking at investing in starbucks this august as well if we do drop below 70 dollars, it may drop all the way to 63 60 a little bit lower for me that's ideal that's even better it just means starbucks is at an even bigger discount so just keep your eyes on that as well but that is it for my hot stocks to watch this August. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. As always, as I mentioned earlier, please drop a thumbs up. These videos do take time to record, to do research, to do all that kind of stuff, editing, all that uploading, everything. So make sure you drop a thumbs up. If you are new around here, hit the beautiful red button below and subscribe to the channel. It is completely free. It does help in a great way. And of course, make sure to share and comment as well. If you do like these kind of videos, these style of videos, just let me know. Make sure to comment on the video and let me know and I will do more of them. As always, make sure you guys check out the first inscription. That is where we trade in Discord. That is the Discord. That is the Royal Trading Academy. There, we talk about stocks. We do breakdowns. We do live trading. We just help people out. We answer questions. We do call outs. We do that and a lot more. But go check out the Discord. And also, check out the second link inscription. That's the Stock Option Starter Pack. That's like a group of 10 videos, which last about three hours, of me talking about options trading. It explains the breakdown of options, how options work, the terminology you need to know, the Greeks, how they affect options, trading strategies, all that and a lot more. So go check that one out. Second description, one-time payment, you have access to those videos for life. And of course, follow me on all social media as I'm always active there. Trading stuff, lifestyle, all the usual stuff as well that you guys see on YouTube. But that is it from me today. Hope you guys did enjoy the top stocks to watch for August. Hopefully those stocks do remain hot. We shall see. But of course, as I mentioned, make sure you guys are back here next time for another video. Thank you so much for today's video. That's it for me. I'm making, you're going to be making. See you guys next time for another video. Peace.